Okay, so we're tackling the final unit of our year. We're looking at chapter 21, neutralization reactions. This is coming directly off of our acid and base unit. This is more of a really brief selected topic uh, looking at neutralization. Now, one of the things that we saw last chapter was that we knew that if we mix um, acids and bases together, we get water and a salt. So that's what this is talking about, that if you mix a solution of a strong acid, which is going to have lots of hydrogen ions in it, and a solution with a strong base, lots of hydroxide ions in it, we end up with a neutral solution because the hydrogen and hydroxide react to form water. Now again, this assumes that the number of hydrogen and hydroxide ions are the same. If you have an unequal amount, then if you have more hydrogen ions, you're going to have an acidic solution. If you have more hydroxide ions, you get a basic solution. But we're looking for that sweet spot where you have just the same number. And that final neutral solution will be neither an acid nor a base because, again, it's neutral. We've neutralized all of the hydrogen and hydroxide from the hydrogen from the acid, hydroxide. So what we're looking at here is just some sample equations of these neutralizations. So we can see with this top one, this is kind of the poster child for what's called a neutralization reaction, reaction where we are reacting an acid and a base together. So we have hydrochloric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. It's a strong acid, strong base. Uh, it's really just a double replacement reaction where uh, the sodium and the chloride go together giving us a salt and then the hydrogen and hydroxide go to give us a water. Anytime we have acids and bases reacting, we're going to get a salt and water. That water really is the prime uh, kind of uh, product of our neutralization, and that's what makes it neutral. Um, now here's another example. Now this one's a little trickier, so we have sulfuric acid, uh, potassium hydroxide. Notice how in this one that we need two of the potassium hydroxides for every one of the sulfuric acid. That's because the sulfuric acid is uh, diprotic, so it has two hydrogens that have to ionize. Uh, so for a complete balanced equation, we need uh, twice the amount of uh, potassium hydroxide. Now again, regardless of the stoichiometry of this, in each case uh, ends up running the same. We have a strong acid reacting with a strong base, and if we mix them in just the right ratio, so for the top one, it's a nice one-to-one -one ratio, because that's what we see with the coefficients. In the second one, we see it's a one-to-two ratio. We need twice as much base. Um, we would get a neutral solution. And again, that's kind of our goal here. Now, as a note, generally, when we mix weak acids um, or, and or weak bases, we are not going to make a neutral solution uh, when we neutralize, which sounds weird. But you have to think of it almost like a game of tug of war. So if I mix equal amounts of a strong acid with a weak base, the strong acid is stronger. That's what makes it strong. If I mix equal amounts of strong acid with a weak base, the resulting solution will actually be acidic because we had a strong acid. Um, but regardless of that, um, anytime we're reacting an acid and base together, we're producing a salt, which again is just an ionic compound, and water, we call that a neutralization reaction. And like I said on the last slide, these are all going to be double replacement reactions. Very, very, very common to see here. In fact, that's what it is. Okay, so what is a titration? A titration is really just uh, the verb that we use for the act of doing the neutralization. So in a titration, we start with an acid, we start with a base, usually, well, one of them is uh, an unknown concentration, and we're mixing them together in really specific amounts, trying to find the point where we have uh, really achieved that neutralization. So that's what a titration is. Now, I want to note that acids and bases will sometimes, but not always, and we've seen this already, react in a one-to-one -one mole ratio. So for here, for example, we see HCl, we see NaOH. This would be one mole of HCl for every one mole of sodium hydroxide. So in this sort of neutraliz neutralization reaction, we would expect to see um, a neutral solution be presented. However, uh, this is similar to one we saw before. We have sulfuric acid, we see sodium hydroxide, 
notice this coefficient of 2 here. Because that coefficient of 2 is present, that means to reach the neutralization, we're actually going to need twice as much sodium hydroxide as we needed sulfuric acid. So you just want to be very careful with that sort of thing. And on another example, we have two hydrochloric acids, one calcium hydroxide, and we have to be careful about it. So we're going to look at an example of titration math. Uh, so this is the sort of problem you might see, and again, in a titration and a neutralization, we're looking for where we have equal moles of our acid and base reactants. And really, it's a stoichiometry problem. So uh, how many moles of sulfuric acid would be needed to neutralize half a mole of sodium hydroxide? That's what we see. So we can see we know how many moles of sodium hydroxide we have. We're trying to find moles of sulfuric acid. So we have our target. First thing I need to do is I need to write down my equation. So I know just from uh, previous uh, experience in last unit that sulfuric acid is H2SO4. I know that sodium hydroxide is NaOH. And I know that because I'm reacting an acid with a base, that we're going to get uh, one of the products will always be water and the other product will be the salt that's left over so I have that sodium left over I have the sulfate left over sodium has a plus one charge sulfates a two minus so I need two of the sodiums so we now have our equation but it's not enough just to have the equation we need to balance the equation so looking at this um, and again, I would almost view that water as a hydrogen hydroxide, but this actually works out relatively simply. Um, I can look at these hydrogens here. I look at the hydrogens. I look at the hydroxide. I'm making water. Notice I have two hydrogens, one hydroxide. That's not going to work because it's one hydrogen, one hydroxide to make water. So we're going to need two of the sodium hydroxides, which gives us two waters and that actually balances my sodium as well. So again, a tip when balancing an equation with a neutralization reaction is really focus on the hydrogen and hydroxide. One, uh, it's always one of each is needed to make water and you need to make sure that those are equal amounts. And finally, we just bring this all together. So it's stoichiometry. We start with what we know. So we knew we had half a mole of sodium hydroxide. Again, you can put that over one if you don't like that just floating there in space. So then go straight to the mole to mole ratio. Remember, in stoichiometry, it's take what you're given, turn it to moles, mole to mole ratio, moles to what we want. Well, we have moles. So now I do my mole to mole ratio. I can see moles of sodium hydroxide cancel. Leaves me with moles of sulfuric acid, which is exactly what I wanted. So the problem is done. Now, one of the main things that we use a titration for is to find out the amount of an acid or base that we have. So again, it's really commonly used for finding an unknown amount. And we do this by doing a neutralization reaction. The most common way to do this and the simplest way to do this is to use an indicator. Um, and so we use an indicator to show when the neutralization is complete. The most common indicator to use in most situations is a chemical called phenylphthalein. Uh, phenylphthalein is used when you have a strong acid, strong base titration. It's also used when you have a weak acid, strong base titration. So very, very, very common. Uh, and again, phenylphthalein tends to be our go-to indicator. It's actually a very pretty chemical. It's colorless in acids faint pink when it's neutral, and that's our goal, and a deep pink, almost a purple in basic solutions. So when you're doing a neutralization with phenylphthalein, you add, your goal is to get the faintest pink possible. So you just keep adding your acid, you add your base, you're neutralizing, and you're trying to get, get to show just the faintest pink possible. And when you've done that, hey, it works. Now, steps for a titration. Uh, what we do is we take a measured volume. This is the most common way. Um, now here I say an acid of unknown concentration. This could be an acid of a known concentration, but in that case, the base would be the unknown concentration. It's one or the other. But here we're assuming the acid is the unknown concentration. So you have to have a measured volume. Have to, have to, have to. Have a measured volume of an acid of an unknown concentration. We add it to a flask. Uh, very, very common to have the acid in a flask, whether it's known or unknown. And you have to know that volume. 
Uh, and then you add the indicator to that flask. So again, the indicator, uh, like phenylphthalein, is colorless in acidic solutions, so this should be colorless currently. Then you're going to use a measured volume of a base of a known concentration. Now again, what's important here is that um, one of those is known. You know one concentration, but the base tends to end up in a device called a burette, and a burette is just a way of really dispensing really specific amounts of our, uh, of our chemical. So that's how we get the measured volume. So we know the volume of our base, um, and we add that to the flask. It's mixed into the acid, and uh, that, at that measured volume, we've, that's where we're at the um, equivalence point. That's where we have equal moles of acid and base. And that's where we say this proceeds until the indicator barely changes color. You're looking for the lightest, very lightest blush of pink. Now, the solution whose concentration we know is called the standard solution. So in this last example, we're saying the base would be our standard solution because we know its concentration. The acid could be your standard solution. Whichever one you know the concentration of, that's your standard solution. Um, the point at which the indicator changes color is called the end point of the titration. Um, now, this is an interesting little point. The point at which the moles of acid equal the moles of base is called the equivalence point. In an ideal world, the equivalence point and the end point are the exact same thing. They're not, um, but they're often so close. They're often, in all honesty, when you're doing a titration, within a fraction of a fraction of a milliliter away uh, that this works out pretty closely but do be aware that if you're using an indicator you're actually finding what is called the end point and you're assuming that it's the equivalence point if you actually want to find the true equivalence point you have to use a ph meter um, that's the only way around that um, and again, you could use the same process to find the concentration of a base using a standard acid. One of those must be standard. One of those must be known. Now, if you're using a pH meter and you're actually graphing this, you can see here we're starting at a low pH because we have the pH meter. We have our acid in there, low pH, and it curves upwards. We're adding base, so the pH should be going up. And notice this kind of nearly vertical piece right there. The center of that nearly vertical piece, that's your equivalence point. Um, if you're using specialized tools, like so, uh, we have software we use with our lab quests, um, it will actually do some calculus for you to find exactly where that point is. Otherwise, you, you can just kind of eyeball it. Uh, but again, we'd be expecting the indicator to change color somewhere in this range. That's our goal. So our endpoint should be pretty close to that. Okay, we're going to look at an example. So we have a 25 milliliter solution of sulfuric acid. It's neutralized by 18 milliliters of one molar sodium hydroxide using phenylphthalein as an indicator. That's just kind of bonus information. Doesn't actually come into play in the problem. What is the concentration of the H2SO4 solution? So the first thing that we need is we need a balanced equation. So we've seen this before. So uh, sulfuric acid, sodium hydroxide gives us this. So again, we're forming water here. We're forming our salt. And again, just to kind of reinforce this, notice because there's these two hydrogens, we're going to need two hydroxides to make two waters. So we have our balanced equation. At this point, it's really just stoichiometry. So here's the trick. This here is the molarity of your standard. This here is the volume of your standard. So we knew the concentration of our base. Now, you might say, but Mr. Anderson, that's not molarity. That's moles over liters. That's what molarity is. If it was a five molar solution, that would be five moles of sodium hydroxide over one liter. If it was 0.2 molar solution, it would be 0.2 moles over, of sodium hydroxide over one liter. So we have the volume. That was given to us. We have the molarity that was given to us. Now, why do we do it this way? Notice the liters of sodium hydroxide cancel. 
And again, that's one of the primary things that we're doing in stoichiometry. Take what you're given, turn it to moles. That's where we're now at. Once we're in moles, what's the next step? Mole to mole ratio. So this comes from the balanced equation. And you can see here, moles of sodium hydroxide, moles of sodium hydroxide cancel. We're now in moles of sulfuric acid. We don't want moles of sulfuric acid. We want molarity of sulfuric acid. So how do we turn moles into molarity? We bring in a volume. So this here is the volume of our acid. It's the volume of our unknown in liters. Because moles per liter is molarity. So then you just run this all through your calculator and you get your answer and you go home happy.